Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all are productive and looking forward to the future. I hope you all are contemplating releasing old thoughts and ideas from the past. I want to look at something that I saw um, with the Samaritan woman in John chapter four. And um, this is what happened. It says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, uh, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? And um, verse nine says, the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? So I saw this here as I began to look at some situations and things. Um, you know, I, I, I began to look at how there's a disassociation of um, tribes and clans and how it was going on back in antiquity and it is today. It's nothing that you can do to change what happened in his story, but it is possibilities that when we look at ourselves in the same light that we can change our story. That means that the possibilities of the world coming together and loving each other is more predominant through each and every one of us, right? And why would I suggest love one another? Well, there's a lot of people that say they're Christians. I didn't do the stats on it, but anybody that listens will say that. There's a lot that um, say that they practice spirituality, mindfulness, um, or they just believe in um, humanity. But when we look around, we see sliding um, all over the world because of race or color, um, gender, um, because of class, you see sliding. And when and how does that change? It only can change with one light going off and saying within each and every person that I see what's happening in some way or another. And most people will identify that they're sliding in, you know, communities that are um, economically um, oppressed. They will see that even the people that live in those areas will see it, but they feel so oppressed that they don't, they don't fight it with what they have within them, which is their own power. That power within each and every one of us, if we're living in an oppressed community says that I'm gonna stand up for my community and let my light shine. How is that? I'm going to be the one that does you know, good. And in this case here, if somebody needs to drink a water, I'm gonna give it to him whether he's a Jew or um, a Samaritan. It doesn't make any difference because we all have the same color blood. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, the other thing is, is that we all have hearts. All of us have kidneys. We all have arms and legs, fingers. We all have brains, whether we use all of the brain or not. We all have um, um, livers. A man has a penis, of course, and a woman has, you know, a uterus. But the fact of the matter that we all have sexual organs is a, a number one factor, right? And so what makes us different when it comes to someone asking you for something? You know, oftentimes there are people that actually may be in a season of testing and they come across someone that um, needs a, 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 you know, some water to drink and they say, get a job. And that is their test. However, it came out for them the fact remains that the person that asked them for water was judged. The person judged them, get a job. So people all over the world are judging by status, the way you look, how you live, how you talk, how you walk. And what good is it gonna do us? What good will it bring? I know that there are some people that just don't care. 
You know, they just live in to live and they're just living to um, make their house right, their money right, their all of their physical life right. But they have not looked at the day of spirit coming and saying, it's your time. What will you give? Don't you know that you got to make a sacrifice? And so the change of a sacrifice, even as we go on down, because what happens here is that she was definitely in, you know, a proposed test. She says, sir, the woman said in, in verse 11, you have nothing to draw with. The well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Because he has spoke of the living waters. Let me go back to 10. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living waters. So here he's suggesting to her that you made an assumption and you don't even know who I am. You just missed the money and the mark on living waters. So she goes on in 11 and she says, sir, you have nothing to draw with. She's still talking about something and she's not on the same page with him. You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? She questions. And so 12 says, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself and did also his sons and his livestock? So the thing is, is that She's in a um, conversation with with Christ and she doesn't know that just by him asking, she became offended because there was a division in cultures. Right. And this is what happens to us. Um, more attention of self, more application of love and happiness and joy can bring us into the place where. I respect what you're doing and you respect what I'm doing. If you need something, my culture and my race um, or my gender does not matter. We are all humans and we should be treated. The class or either the community that I live in, I should not be profiled because of that, right? So here Jesus goes on in verse 13 and answered um, her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But, and he's, he's, he's given an identity of physical water, the water that we drink here in life. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now, this water, of course, is the water that changes your heart and your mind. This is the water um, of, of life that changes your mind where you become a powerful individual. You become someone that is empowered to know that when um, life is tough, you have a living wellspring within you that you can go to and tap into that will give you water. You won't thirst for anything, meaning that you know when frustration comes upon you or even anger, that you have a wellspring that will um, quench the thirst that is trying to come up and say, you know, you need this and you need that, or you're separated, you have no support and no one is there for you. This is the water that he's talking about because here, when you drink physical water, it will quench quench your thirst for a minute. But if you're going outside or you're active, you're going to need some more water. Indeed, the water that I give you, this water is a water that touches your mind, your heart and your soul. And it changes the thirst, a thirst of unhealthy desires. You see, because this water in the physical that, that we talk about, it could be a water that brings up sexual desires, um, a water of desires to hurt someone, or even in this case right here, to speak of separation of cultures. This is a thirstiness because that means that someone is seen as not being enough or that you don't meet me where I am. You're not in my class. This is pride. But here, verse 14 says, but whoever drinks this water, I give them. They will never thirst again because they'll be free 
from the word of God to know that there's no limits in life. They don't have to be frustrated or angry. They don't have to feel sexually deprived. You know why? Because something is coming that will be stable in their life. They don't have to feel like they'll never have the relationship that they want because they'll know how to begin to create a healthy relationship through the waters of life, eternal life, by the way that Christ gives. The bills will be um, canceled because you will begin to understand that you didn't come here with bills. You lived in an environment, in a society that taught you how to create bills so that others would be able to oppress you. It's no different than um, the cultural separations or the desire to be hungry for sex because society is showing us a sexual world. The thirst is shifted. And then the spiritual man becomes stronger so that you can think positive and reap positive rather than your, your physical man always getting you entrapped in situations such as this here. Because, you know, when you go on, the woman said to her, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Uh, okay. And, and, and so 16 says, he told her, go call your husband and come back. 17, I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. Verse 18 says, the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. 19, sir, the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. Now, I don't have to say anything more because as you go back and I tell you about the waters of life and the difference in them, meaning physical and spiritual, she did not have a husband, but she had been with five men that had been her husband, okay? According to the scripture, Jesus is telling her something about herself that changed her life right then and there because you can go and read it for yourself. But the fact that it mattered that he called her out, how can you judge me and tell me that Jews and Samaritans, they don't they don't they don't give each other water? You know what I'm saying? When you're looking at me in a way of uh, slighting me because I'm a Jew, yet you got some stuff in your uh, your back door that you need to sweep and clean up. You looking at my back door because I am of a culture. And I only asked you for some water. I didn't ask you to bring up the fact that we are different in cultures. And this happens all the time. And, and, and so she was blown away because he went deep on her. So a penny for your thought. When you go out, do you size people up for who they are, what they don't have, what you think they should have? Or do you accept people for who they are? Because this is where we are in life, acceptance. But you know, the acceptance starts with self because this is where Jesus was. He was just going to a place, but he was demonstrating the Christ within him, which was love and accepting people unconditionally. You know, if you're always looking at people for what they have and what they don't have and what they have is what, you know, you think makes life great, you could be missing something because the person that has been oppressed in most cases and um, been restricted has more wisdom than a person that has, you know, had the uh, financial success. I mean, take many, many uh, centuries of um, kings and queens. They didn't know um, how an individual felt living in oppression. But when the tables turned, oh, how the mighty fall and they begin to understand the feelings of a human being that they had no concern about the way that they lived or the way that they felt throughout oppressive circumstances, which means that we live in a society that many people don't look at 
They look at what they're doing every day, but they don't look at the society that has caused the problems that we see. That society being formed by rich politicians who never ever really look at the fact of the matter that we got people out there that need a drink of water that's in the streets. And they're creating bills saying that these people should be institutionalized, meaning in prison. The system has no accommodation for people that are homeless. And the, the conversation about this goes on. And the mere fact that this is so is stated throughout the Bible from antiquity time, because we never seen Jesus actually, you know, in a synagogue or in a church teaching. He was only there one or two times in the Bible. He was always in the streets and in the communities. That speaks volumes. It's a lot there that people have not looked at. And the people embraced him in the communities because he was right there to encourage people to get up and take your bed. Like the man at, you know, the pool of Bethesda that was making excuses, um, encouraging the disciples to go out and don't take your purse. Learn to live by um, the, the power of giving, you know, and where are we with that? Many, many people are afraid because our, our system has told us, you know, that you can only make money or receive money if you go to work. Why is this? So we have a lot of changes that we have to make individually because accepting ourselves is number one. If you're different, accept it, love it, embrace it. And, you know, the spirit will definitely bless you. The other thing is, is if you think negative all the time, you've got to work on negative thinking because you won't have anything. That person that lives in a community that is oppressed and they're always complaining about what they have, not, they won't ever have it. You've got to start speaking, I am more than enough. I have everything that I need, even when it looks like you don't have it because it's the words and thoughts. And yes, sometimes we come here living in these states, but we come here in oppressed situations because God has given us the power to change what we're living in. How? By tapping into yourself. You are not without anything. The simple fact is, is that we've been taught the wrong way. And that, you know, understanding as we grow older, we have the power to uh, understand and take back uh, the knowledge, to, to regain, to edify ourselves, not just in the Bible, but, you know, if, if you have psychological issues, then why wouldn't you go to a psychiatrist? If you know that your child has behavior challenges, why would you take them to uh, begin to work on that? I hear people saying, because they're gonna be labeled. Look, to hell with labeling, find someone that can help your child, right? We have so many people that are advocating for different situations and I commend them, but I commend the ones that are actually helping because they have went through something because when you suffer through situations and you turn into an advocate for that situation, then you're exposing the world for what it is. Meaning in this same situation where Jesus exposed this woman at the well, who do you think you are telling me that I'm a, I'm a Jew and you're a Samaritan? OK, let us begin to look at our accusations. Let us begin to unify and know that culture doesn't matter. Race doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. What matters is, is that we're able to come together and assist each other in these ever changing times that will never, ever go back to be the way that they were uh, before 2020. We have been in a position of change from the time I was born in the 60s. You know, people like Martin Luther King and, you know, Malcolm X was already talking about what was to come pro prophetically. And here people are still dragging their feet, trying to stay in a state or a, 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 a governmental system that has not been conducive to help anybody but those that created it. Yes, you see new ones coming in, but it's always family. They're families. 
You got to see the big picture. Begin to work in your communities. Edify your communities. Support them. Give a drink. Don't talk about a child or a young woman that has been lost and wayward. See what you can do to help her. Because nine times out of 10, there's generational issues that have been going on that have oppressed the families. We're here not as one person, but as a person that can bring change and edify you know, many so that a world can be changed. You guys, I'm going to um, go ahead and you know, tap out here. I hope you get my message. It is time for a change. Um, it's time for hearts and minds to be touched as this woman's heart was touched at the well. It's time for us to be motivated and proactive to assist each other and to love on each other and to build each other up. All right. So you guys have a good day. Remember, you have the power to change. It starts with you accepting that you are a powerful individual. Bye bye.